Okay, this is um, the new uh, setup I've got for my P. Cancerides, which I rehoused about ooh, a week ago. I didn't show you because it wasn't particularly exciting, um, and it went, you know, without any issue. Um, and in that week, it's done this. So I've decided to go for just a simple substrate and moss setup. I put the moss sort of you know, higher up so that it could sort of burrow underneath it, and it has. So, um, they do burrow uh, for Victopus. All of mine have burrowed, I think, at least once um, in the last year or so. Um, yeah, just uh, I put a bit of mo uh, moss here. Um, if you put that under your water dish, um, it might help uh well but what happens around the water dish is it tends to go a bit manky and you have to keep cleaning it sort of every week or checking it so moss is kind of more resistant to mold and um yeah i just think it might work better if it's it's on a sort of dry bit of moss um so i'm giving that a go it's just little things that you can try and you know because you're constantly changing what you do and how you keep your teas um although you know it might not make much difference, but um, but this one's obviously changed its um, style because it was previously on, um, you know, just a bit of soil, but it's really obviously likes to burrow a bit. I'm going to have to try and coax it out with a roach. Should, I'd be very surprised if it doesn't want to eat because the good thing about these pea cancerides is, cancerides is they're great eaters. So if you want a tea that's going to eat all the time and, um, you know, something you can film because of their takedowns. This is where I'm proved wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm proved wrong, aren't I? <laughs> There's a nasty bit of... Ah, here we go. Don't disappoint me. Oh, damn it. Ugh. Of course, now I've got the problem that it's down there. Great. So, on to the next, <laughs> which is my A-Gen. Um, and that should have a roach, and you should be able to see it. But um, I'll, I might just include this anyway. It's a bit of waffle, but um, I thought it was semi-interesting. And there you go. It's having a nice roach. Great little eaters. Brilliant teas. You must get one on in your collection if you haven't got one. All right. I've got a good uh, nickname for this one. I'm going to call it Feisty Scamper, or just Scamp, because it just uh, scampers about quite a lot. Should have a roach. Oh dear, where's it gone? Typical. Now this is where I need a, a long pokey stick. I don't want to use my tongs because I'm going to end up with an A gen up my tongs. Now where is it? Oi. Just going to go for my tongs. Up. Oh, there you go. Nom noms. Another one of my favourites, this one. And um, I might get some more Acanthoscuria at some point, just because the species is just, just um, sorry, uh, is just so amazing. Um, great temperament. Well, obviously, can be a bit scary when they're bigger. But uh, right, let's see um, if my OBT wants to feed. I might just do an update on that. Um, if not, um, if it goes badly, then uh, this will be the end of the vid vet, maybe, or perhaps some more feeds if I if I. Uh, include them. So this is actually a cr critter keeper which I was previously house housing my uh, crickets in um, but I put my OBT in it and the reason for that being is I uh, had mould um, which was a real bummer because it took me ages to get this one settled and um, it made a lovely um, sort of layer, but along the side of the enclosure, sort of, so imagine to this right hand side, there was yellow mould, so, um, yeah, so it's now in here, and it's made a lovely little, um, 
webbed up cocoon. Now, that to me looks as though it's in pre-molt because it refused to cricket the other day and it's also been roaming around. And um, But, yep, it's made a little nest there, so that's nice. And hopefully um, this little trap or lady will molt soon and it will settle down in here and be, be happier. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Um, troubles abound with um, OBTs, but it uh, looks as though we've made a bit of success. Um, I think you saw in the in a, a previous vid that uh, it had eaten. Um, it was eating okay. It had a worm, I think, uh, and it, yes, you know, it was looking great in there. But just uh, keep an eye out for mould, chaps and ladies. Um, it can happen on mostly on the side or deep down, and it was actually. Uh, Another enclosure I had had a mushroom on the sign, and I had to. Well, don't take the risk, is my opinion. But um, uh, yeah, so that's my OBT. Okay, you've never seen my G Poker Plays uh, slings I've got because they're very small, and this one's just molted. So within, ooh, they can see it's molt there to the right hand side. So that's probably been just a few hours if that so um great news that it's getting a bit bigger hey, it's going to stay in here i reckon for a, ooh at least another two or three molts so the good thing about the slow growers is you don't often have to rehouse them but you have to keep an eye on the humidity because of mold and stuff you don't want to overwater them but yeah a little update on my uh g polka place sling growing very slowly um my other G polka still hasn't molted and it's six weeks, which is quite incredible. Um, uh, yeah, I use a little Monopoly water dish here and occasionally just water perhaps once every week down the subs. So yeah, just a little update on this little chap. Looking very, very, very cute. Right.